Uh, thank you everybody for, for coming out today. Um, I'm Jesse Bausch. I'm the athletic director at the moment. Uh, as you can see, Lynn Tubman is up in the top left corner of my computer, but she was um, everything for me to get to this seat. So I'm really happy that she's here. Also, Albert Strobel is, is here with us as well. But um, this is just a special, it's just an honor to join everyone here for this special event. It's the Chestnut Hill College Athletics Alumni Zoom. It's part of a virtual reunion that we're doing this weekend. And this afternoon, we, ha we have this opportunity to kind of celebrate, reflect, and reconnect and reminisce and welcome a number of generations of Griffins. And so right now I wanna begin by welcoming our panel members and thank them for joining us. And I want everyone, the panel members to introduce yourself. So I'm gonna start with my boss, Lynn Tubman. So why don't you introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Great, thank you, Jesse. Former boss, mm -hmm. uh, Lynn Tubman. I was the director of athletics at Chestnut Hill for nine years. And, uh, recently left. No, actually, it's been three years, so not so recently, uh, but still stay connected. This is my first formal uh, event return to campus uh, and glad to be participating, but uh, Chestnut Hill is a special place and I'll, will always have a special place in my heart and uh, glad to be here. Thank you, man. You'll always be the boss lady to me. Albert Strobel. How you doing, everyone? Uh, Albert Strobel. I was the uh, assistant AD, then to be associate AD, and the men's and women's tennis coach uh, for 10 years. Greg had it wrong in the program, so I just want to correct that. Um, yeah, I mean, Chestnut Hill was a great place. I mean, I kind of saw it when it, you know, when we were Division three and barely putting teams on the floor to, you know, finally, you know, when I left, I mean, we had teams competing for conference and NCAA championships and uh, added a ton of sports, added a ton of things that, you know, I think, athletes prior to us doing that could only dream of and uh just been watching what's been going on the last five years and and all the stuff that jesse's done with uh with the program and um i see great things for it so um ha always happy to be here always happy to help and support uh any way that i can thank you coach and this, uh, originally i was just going to go through the panel members but i think because we're such a small group i'm going to go each person let everyone introduce yourself and tell us who you are and and when you graduate and what and, and and all that good stuff and whatever comes to mind. So I'll go to Shane Morlock next. I'm Shane Morlock. I was part of the, uh, the inaugural lacrosse team at Chestnut Hill. I was a 2013 graduate. Uh, I'm from Canada, from Ontario. Uh, I made the, the trip south of the border, not knowing what to expect. And here we are for, uh, after four years there, I probably the best four years of my life. I'm proud Griffin alumni and uh, really, really happy to be here. Thank you, Shane. And your claim to fame will always be that your brother won a Stanley Cup with the Boston Bruins. And I just wanted to like bump into you every time I saw you because you actually had a brother that played for the Stanley, won the Stanley Cup. So welcome back. Okay, Jeannie, is, is it Schwilly? It's it is. You did very well. Because usually you. The, I get how do you pronounce that? But I am anything but an athlete, as everybody will tell you. But I like this topic. And I, first of all, I graduated a million years ago in 65. But the evolution of athletics at Chestnut Hill, I mean, is an interesting topic for me because let's face it, it was all women in the college and the athletics were very much more limited than they are now. So I'm delighted to... Um, see all of you and to attend this because hearing more about it is wonderful. Well, welcome, Jeannie. And I'm really happy that Thank you're you. here, even though you did not play athletics any sport, <laughs> because I think it's very important. I, I think it's, it's something that I, that I'm very big on in the college that we, that we're all inclusive of the athletes and the non-athletes. And we're all, we're all Chestnut Hill Griffins at heart. So I'm happy that you're here and I'm glad that it's not all athletes and I'm glad that you're comfortable to jump on with us. We're trying to get rid of that stigma. So welcome. Christopher <laughs> Evans. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher Evans. Uh, I graduated in 2019. Um, I was a part of the basketball team with Coach Jesse and also Coach JJ Butler was my teammate. Um, so 
so happy to be on this call. Uh, Chestnut Hill was such a blessing for me. Um, you know, kind of changed my life and, you know, geared me towards the right direction. Uh, I was able to make some great connections and still be able to keep in touch with some friends that are now brothers to me. So I'm just all time grateful uh, for the opportunity that Chestnut Hill presented me and I was able to capitalize on. It. So thank you. Welcome, CA. JJ Butler. How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is JJ Butler. Like Chris said, um, I did play for the basketball team in 2000, uh, 2017, 16, 17 season. Uh, shout out to uh, Coach Jesse. He brought me in as a graduate transfer. Um, played one year and then was fortunate enough to jump on the basketball staff as a graduate assistant and kind of uh, jump started my coaching career. Uh, like Chris said, I, I was able to make a ton of friends at Chestnut Hill. It's a near and dear place in my heart, so much so that. Uh, I jumped at the opportunity to come back and be the head men's basketball coach, which I'm extremely thankful um, and excited for the opportunity, but really excited to be in the meeting, uh, hear everybody else's perspective on how athletics has evolved in the college and hopefully try to pick people's brains and brainstorm some things on how we can continue to allow athletics to evolve and take everything to the next level. But excited to hear what everybody says today. Thanks, Coach. Dan Atherton. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, uh, Dan Atherton, one of the original baseball nine or however many people were on that first team. Way too many, to be honest. Um, really unique. I got to work with some of these people alongside, like on the after graduation, but graduated 2011. Had the pleasure of playing the baseball team under Bob Spratt for multiple years. Seen a lot of the guys grow up, which is awesome. Welcome some beautiful family members into their homes and stuff like that. Um, I got married about six months ago to a, my lovely bride and she's in the other room because she didn't want to be on camera. But um, hopefully enjoying this, the pleasures of adding to my own family in the future, maybe some future baseball players. But I guess the, like, the biggest thing for me um, was I was watching the playoffs for our team this past month or whatever it was. And some guy hit a grand slam. And the first thing I thought was hit the next guy, no doubt about it. So like, I still have the competitive spirit and I don't think anything will ever replace that. And college baseball, like as soon as baseball was done in college, like nothing will ever compete to the competitiveness of that. So pleasure being. A couple side notes. Number one, that grand slam, he threw the bat way too high and that's why he should have gotten hit. Second of all, Dan, are you the all-time leading hit man, or you were you until Amir just broke? The I record? was, but that doesn't count because he's using metal bat. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll, we'll, I played we'll, less we'll, games. We'll get back to that. Yeah, Dan was will. also my lunch partner when he was working at admissions. We ate lunch every day in the cafeteria. So nice sure. to see you again, Dan. You too. Harry Davis. Hi everyone. My name's Harry. Um, I was part of, I believe, the second. No, third year of the football team. Um, I played there um, three years. I was on the offensive and defensive line. Um, I just graduated last December uh, with the pandemic and everything. And I also did track for two years. Um, I believe I hold the farthest javelin throw at CHC. I'm not sure. I think Duncan Malone might have uh, something to say about that. But uh but yeah, so it's just a great opportunity to be here and represent my uh, my two teams that I miss very dearly. Welcome back, Harry. And Harry was also a huge help to the athletic department in his mainly his senior year um, when he literally did so many different things within the department voluntarily and uh, we really appreciated that while you were there huh you know playing two sports and an excellent student and also like i said a lot of administrative things on and the behind the scenes that, that no one really knew about but it did not go unnoticed by any means huh um margaret it looks like your husband's napping do you give me one of these if i'm starting to talk too loud and are you would you like to introduce yourself or are you going to just shut tight frozen no I'm, I'm not frozen i'm just using my avatar so that you don't see how disheveled things are here oh you look great <laughs> you look great 
I didn't even I realize do. that is, I do. That's the that's best, why I, <laughs> that is the best why avatar I ever saw. I thought you were just staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm not afraid to talk a little bit, but I think I'm waking him up a bit. So awesome. I'll just type. Awesome. I, I, I was an art major okay. and studied Russian and as well. And uh, that made my career. I went into Russian art history and had a very successful teaching career. That's great. Yeah. And I love, I love the bandana. Great touch. <laughs> Marine, M Marine Fisher McLaughlin. How about if you introduce yourself? I know you did a little bit, but talk a little bit about what you do. Sure. Hi, everybody. Thanks again for being here. I am the director of alumni relations at the college. I am not an alum myself but my husband is, so I like to use that. <laughs> um, I, have, I have been at the college now for almost five years and I absolutely love it. Um, I think that the alumni of this college are some of the best around, uh, so loyal, so dedicated, all seem to have had a wonderful experience. Um, so it's a, it's a joy to work at the college. Um, I, today is part of reunion, which normally we have a full weekend full of events, but we couldn't do that this year due to the pandemic. So this is, um, second best, but we will be fully reopening in the fall. So I hope you can all come back for things, spring football games, events that we do in the alumni office, everything. We're so excited to get back in person. Um, and I just wanted to also say that Jeannie did not, time, Jeannie's too time. humble and she did I'll not say that she anyway. uh, is the president I, of the I alumni. Like well, thanks Maureen. But I also didn't say that I'm a big sports fan. <laughs> so, and I have two sons who tell me it's very good to have a mother who likes sports. So, although I didn't play when you said Shane, you said your brother was on the Stanley Cup winning Bruins. I go, boo, because I'm a Flyers <laughs> fan, you know. My son met Brian Propp the other night yes. who played for the Flyers. And he's, I said, were you the only one there who knew him? <laughs> and Dave said, just about, you know. This is about this is athletics. Was, it's good. But um, just, just I know. said, I'm a, I love sports. I, I think I can maybe... I'm going to lead this off with a question and I'm going to start with Lynn Tubman because I, I, be I believe that that she started the real turn in events for the athletic program. Uh, that's that's when everything started going directly up. So um, Lynn, why don't you talk a little bit about when you first started, where, what you looked at when you got to the program and and what your vision was and how you feel when you left? Well, I can't take all the credit. I I, I do prior to me arriving, obviously the transition, I think uh, Jeannie said it from all in all women's college to co-ed was huge, right? And both, I think, Jesse, you were there, Albert, you were there as well, right? Um, so I think that's very, a very interesting thing that we should touch on is like what that was like bringing in men for the first time to the college and trying to start intercollegiate athletics. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Janice Kuklik um, because she was a pioneer for athletics and she was a mentor for me and for many student athletes who went into coaching. Um, just her positive attitude and being a pioneer during Title IX really helped the college. You know, we, were, we had a good foundation going into becoming co-ed and then making that transition to division two. Um, and I think that was the second thing that really helped the college move forward. And that was before my time um, when sister Carol made that decision to go division two um, that really, I think helped our coaches and, and the men's programs recruit with athletic scholarships to help build those programs. Um, so I'd like to take the credit, but I can't take all the credit. And then I was fortunate to come from the former Philadelphia University, uh, now Thomas Jefferson, and had, you know, a school that was in the conference, so had some knowledge of what was needed to continue to move the program forward. And with the support, again, of Sister Carol, um, we were able to just 
build stronger programs that we've had, that we had, and then continue just to add sports. I felt like that was one of the, um, I don't know if it was my vision, but it certainly was a, an initiative for the college to increase enrollment and continue to add sports. And we did it strategically um, and successfully. Um, from starting from the JV baseball squad, Dan, where we carried what close to 50 guys on the baseball team uh, to then track and field, sprint football, bowling, et cetera. But uh, I think some of the things a little bit before my time helped me continue to build the program. Awesome. Yeah, Janice was amazing. I was hoping she'd be on here because then I knew I wouldn't have to talk much at all because she would take over. And I would hand that over to her. But Janice actually hired me. And again, uh, great word, pioneer, completely set the stage for everything um, and, and means so much to the college. Um, at both, at, what, a, what an amazing human being she is and just so vibrant. Um, I'll just throw this out there as well. I, I would like for somebody to step in and just kind of talk about your time at the college, anyone, and what you saw over the years you were there, whether it was four years or five years, if you did the five-year plan, that's great. Um, but, but how did you see things change? And, and if you are continuing to watch today, what you see and what you want to continue to see? Well, I went from getting a closet to a real office. So that was a, a big move. Uh, Jesse, you, you know, the feeling you had the same office. So um, no, I just think that every year that I was there, we got better. You know, we, you know, whether it was our teams getting better or something that we did, you know, uh, you know, academic wise for the kids, like every year, our goal was to add something to the experience. And I think, you know, even though we didn't have the top notch facilities that, that we traveled to, um, we always put a good product out there. And I feel like we did more with less every year and our teams were competitive. Um, and I think that just goes to the type of coaches that we had, the type of administrators we had, and the type of kids that we tried to recruit. We didn't try to recruit always the best player, but the best fit for the college. And I think that was a big part of the success that we had. So. Great call. And yes, you're right. What a great, how things have evolved. I'm going to wait until everyone else gets to talk, but I was, I've been here since 2003 when men were admitted. So I have a, I have a lot to say, but I don't. I don't want to take too much of of everyone's time. Uh, Dan, when you, I know you mentioned you were watching the playoffs. Talk a little bit about you know your time at Chestnut Hill and what you saw as it evolved, and then and what as you watch now, what you think. You know, so I know sometimes when you watch TV or you're watching a game, you think like, man, I wish we had this or I wish we had that. Um, why don't you talk to us about that a little bit? Sure. I mean, the biggest thing, like, I absolutely love the New Jerseys. Like that is like one of the coolest things. Like if anyone's a big college football fan, you watch Ohio State, Oregon, like all these schools have five jerseys and away jersey, a home jersey. It's so cool. And that was something that I really liked. Like it was cool seeing like people in all white and, and Chestnut Hill, like when we first started, but like the first time we ever put on like an alternate jersey for a game was like, that was like a real college experience for me. So and I saw that when we had like we shuttled to the games, we had like no fans there. We didn't really have a full time field. I still have two, two fake teeth from the old one. So we'll uh, we'll go along with that. That's a story for another day. But like a field that we call home, like a, a school that we called home. So it was just it's a unique experience, like starting something. So I'm sure Shane will be able to talk about that as well. Like he was, I think, two years after me, if you were starting the program around then. So it's incredible to see like I think Chestnut Hill was a really unique baseball school at least because compared to the schools that we were playing against I thought we had some very high achieving students that were also great athletes whereas potentially some of the schools that we were playing against were more focused on the sports aspect than the than the academics where we had a very good balance of both so um and a quick shout out to all my teachers senior year I broke my hand and they still let me go to all the games so that was something that I don't know if all the other schools out there are willing to do that, like sacrifice for the students because they are athletes as well. So it's, it's just been, it was a four years that I don't, I won't soon forget, but the, the new jerseys and, and the playoffs and the seeing them online and being able to stream all the games, like 
it's just so much different than when I started and I absolutely love it. So I'm glad that we're able to stay in touch with everybody. And um, it's, it's been a unique year anyway, um, but I'm so glad that we got to watch them in the playoffs and obviously wish they'd won more, but soon to come. CC championship is a year or two away at most. So congrats to all those guys. Couldn't agree more. And I'm pretty, I'm glad that you, it's almost like you were reading my mind because I was about to jump to Shane and you just shouted them out. So I'm going to come right to you, Shane. And I want you to talk about, you know, coming from Canada down to a, a little college in Philadelphia, what that was like, and and then also into what I just asked about how everything has evolved. Yeah, um, I remember meeting Coach Carrington at a recruiting showcase in uh, it was Ithaca, New York. And in Canada, our education system is a little different. It's the year you're born that you go to school. So I understand in the States, if you're born after September 30th, your parents usually hold you back. So I'm a 91, but I'm a December baby. So I was 17 going off to school and I wasn't sure if I was ready for it, but uh, I remember going down and I think it was July to see Chestnut Hill and I immediately fell in love with it. So my parents and that for them was the biggest thing. And just seeing, you know, the town going down Germantown Ave and then going obviously see Liberty Bell and whatnot, getting a cheesesteak, getting a good cheesesteak. Um, you fall in love immediately. And then Obviously, as Dan said, you meet the guys you meet is just it's the first year there. We went through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff that went south, but we still came out on top in terms of like personality wise and just it made us better people. Then seeing the facilities change, our our gym that used to be in the basement of Font Bon uh, turned into this high end facility, at least in my mind at that time. And and then just the evolution of the of the team and how coach Terranova came back and it's something that I absolutely love and respect because he waited till our, his last class was gone to leave, went to Lafayette, a division one school, got that experience and then came back because ultimately it says a lot about Chestnut Hill. I think uh, about what it does to you. It makes you, you know, fall in love with the small school atmosphere to piggyback on the teachers. I, I mean, I wasn't a great academic in high school and I got really lucky that Chestnut Hill had these amazing one-on-one -on -one resources. And uh, Honestly, it sticks with me today. I'm a teacher now, so I'm a French teacher in Canada. And it's something I don't forget the, the ways they went out of their way for me and uh, really accommodate me and things I needed um, just that. And then seeing them achieve on the field now too, uh, winning the CACCs. Unfortunately, they get invited to the big dance, but, it's still just so awesome to see every sport, every just everything about the school just excel, and it's it's amazing. It, it makes me really happy. Awesome. Common theme about the the community at Chestnut Hill, and so I'm going to go to Chris Evans next. I know you were talking about how it changed everything for you. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what you mean? Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chestnut Hill has definitely changed my life uh, for the better. Um, one reason being, you know, after school, after I graduated, I was put in a position to, uh, you know, play overseas basketball, potentially. Um, shout out to J Coach J.J. Butler for helping me, you know, do those things or trying to do those things. I was also put in a position to come straight out of school and get a great job as a mentor slash counselor and also put me in a great position to be a first time homeowner. So, you know, without Chestnut Hill, the success that I've had after school would not exist. Um, definitely. I don't think so. Um, you know, but to the growth of the school, um, while I was in school, um, the sprint football team was something that just had started up and I thought it was pretty cool, you know, given, you know, these students, you know, opportunity to play football that some schools may have not given them an opportunity for. And then, you know, you know, most of the growth that I've seen or that I took and noticed to, it's more so individual growth. Um, so a lot of my teammates are in great positions right now. And, uh, you know, seeing their growth from being on a team as a freshman, like, you know, people like Noel Hightower and Dexter Harris and Seamus Radke, two, three years older than me, you know, being able to graduate and jump right into the work field and, you know, show me that it's possible that you can go out here and be successful. You know, Noel Hightower, is the head of men's basketball operations up at you know, Lehigh University. One of my best friends growing up um, before he got to Chestnut Hill. So, you know, Coach J.J. Butler, like I said, um, being able to evolve from an assistant coach at Chestnut Hill, a player, to now being the head coach of the school is, you know, individual evolution uh, has what I, is what I've been seeing from a lot of my peers 
that I've played with. Also, Demetrius Isaac, heavily involved with uh, the Monarchs baseball organization down in South Philly. So it's just a, it's a blessing to see and a blessing to be a part of. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. I want to jump to the women real quick. Jeannie and Margaret and Mary, I see it. Mary McDevitt. Before you talk, I want, I want you to tell us who you are and when you graduated, but I'm just going to throw something out to you. Uh, what, what did it feel like for you when you heard that men were being admitted to the college? Were you averse to it? Were you, did you think it was exciting or, or were you against it at first? I know you love it now, of course, but how did you feel originally? I was thrilled that the men were, were coming because I knew, having been to enough presentations that without it, Chesson Hill was not going to survive. And I told a woman that I met recently, she's still unhappy about it. And I said, <laughs> you had a choice. Chestnut Hill was going to be co-ed or not exist. And the men have been wonderful from the beginning. And I think it's terrific because the atmosphere is so good and I love seeing the Facebook posts about the different sports, you know, how well somebody's doing. If it's not a good game, it doesn't matter. Everybody's out there trying and the sprint football games were fun. The couple that I went to, but to see everybody out there, with the Chestnut Hill logo on their jerseys is wonderful for me. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Margaret, how, how did you feel when you heard we were that men were being admitted to the college? Yeah, well, I was angry. I just thought, oh, there should be something we can do to keep it uh, unisex. But then, of course, I did believe them when they told me that we Chestnut Hill would not survive if we didn't go go ahead. So, uh, you know, you bow to the reality and, and you adapt, but you guys really are a tremendous uh, asset. It is very clear to me that that was the good move. Thank you. Yeah, totally understandable. I mean, change is difficult. And I think Chestnut Hill College, when it was all women, had so many great traditions. And, and I'm sure there's some worry that maybe some of those traditions are going to go away and uh, all kinds of different of things. And, and again, I, I think there was also a, an element of, of women power and having your own college and, and, that, and that, that change, there's so much, you know, who knows what's going to end up happening. But I, I also agree in 2000, from 2003 until now, I've seen so much of, evo so much of the evolution and, and it comes down to the coaches and the admissions departments bringing in the right men. And, you know, I think, I think we found a way to kind of weave into Chestnut Hill College's history without changing the tradition that the women laid out for us all. So um, I know. Yeah, I well, that. you know, one thing, it looks as if athletics is no longer a joke at uh, Chestnut Hill. Right. So you're... <laughs> we are not, we are not a joke at all, Margaret. I, I really like that. It's, it's very useful to have something else to be proud of. I love it too. And I, I'm just going to take one second to talk about the coaching staff that we have right now uh, is unbelievable. Young, uh, energetic, really recruiting the right kids. Um, and so I think the future is really, really bright um, because of it. And now I'm going to go to JJ Butler real quick because JJ, as he stated, played for me for a year, coached with me, and then moved on to another school, Tuscarawana, and then came home to be the next head coach of the men's program. And he's one of the, one of the reasons why I'm excited about our, our athletic program. So JJ, why don't you talk to us about how quickly, you know, you only, you only went to Chestnut for one year, but thing, it seems like things kind of, everything kind of fell into place for you at the same time. Um, yeah, you could definitely say everything fell into place. Uh, CE kind of hit it on the head a little bit. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be well, thankful to you, but fortunate to be around such a great group of young men and, um, a group in which I'm still extremely close with. Um, LeBon All was on that team. He's currently on my staff. Um, CE mentioned Demetrius Isaac um, and No Hightower and himself, all of which uh, were invited and came to my wedding. 
um, are still very close friends of mine. And um, I was extremely thrilled to come back because I knew it was an environment that I thrived in and uh, I enjoyed being a part of. I thought it was a, an environment that I can re recruit young men to and um, honestly say that it, it makes it made me a better person, a better man. Um, it's a great place to grow as an individual. Um, and I think everybody's kind of hit on the fact that the small close knit community has impacted them in some way, somehow, whether it was athletically, academically, socially. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely home to say the least. Um, and I'm really excited and uh, appreciative uh, to be a part of this and hear from everybody's perspective um, because I, I don't think you can uh, know di the direction you want to go in unless you know where you come from. And while I was only here for a short amount of time prior to uh, being put in this position of, as the head men's basketball coach, I'm really um, prideful in where, where we've come from and want to use that to fuel uh, wherever we're able to go hopefully follow the path that uh, Coach Terranova and Spratt and uh, others like them have set so far. Yeah, it's great. It, it, it's, it's funny. And I'm, I'm not just saying this because the two of them are on this call, but I, I've, I've coached there for 17 years and Noah Hightower, Demetrius Isaac, Chris Evans, JJ Butler. I've talked about them each individually at some point. I find myself going, he is one of the best human beings that I've ever been around about each one of them. And I, I say that and I go like, wait, I said that already. I said that already. I said that already, but, but I meant it. And, and I think to me, that's, that's a lot of what I love about Chestnut college. I find that over and over again with a lot of people, but I, I had the, was fortunate to coach those gentlemen and good players, good athletes, great people, but unbelievable people. Um, and then uh, Harry, I, I, I skipped over you. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about your, your experience and, you know, you were on the sprint football team, track and field, doing all things with the athletic department while being, um, you know, in a, in a major where you were getting, I believe, were you all four O's there? If you weren't, you were pretty high up there. I was close. Got it. Just barely. <laughs> very, very bright, very bright young man for us. So, go ahead, Harry, why don't you talk about what your experience was like? I, I feel like I was – I was fortunate to have like a very um, unique experience when it came to athletics. Um, fo uh, sprint football was, uh, we had our original coach, uh, Mike Pearson, and um, he moved on. And then we had, uh, you know, kind of like a, a little go of it when it came to coaches and working through that process for a season and it was just a very unique prospect that we got. And uh, my working with athletics just in general uh, kind of gave me a different look at the actual running of athletics and some of the things that we were fortunate enough to do when it came to sprint football, like uh, move to the stadium, a Garthway, and, um, you know, really make that home for us. And it was, it was just a great opportunity also to see like our team, our team on the football sprint football side has grown like so much. I, I talked to coach Gio, who's the current coach and um, he has a good recruiting class coming in. And I'm, I'm just so excited to see the future for that team. I also think that my experience underpinned the ability of student athletes to be not only more than, uh, just one sport and athletics, but also uh, the academic side where two, which was already said by a bunch of the former student athletes here, um, the teachers and the faculty and their willingness to work with student athletes who have some, I mean, I would never want to go through the baseball schedule. I give props to all, all the, the base, the former baseball players in here. I don't know how you did that at all. Um, <laughs> But it's just one of those things where you have people who support you and it's not just your coaches or your teammates, but it's really the whole community who, you know, come like come around our sports teams. And while I was there and I know that, you know, my senior season being lost as it was lost by so many uh, student athletes, um, I really 
think that, you know, leaving CHC, I, there was nothing that I would have changed about my experience because I consider myself very fortunate, especially on the football end, to play the sport I love in a league that I didn't know existed until I got a call one random Saturday <laughs> um, about Chestnut Hill. So I think it's – the community is amazing, and I just feel so fortunate to be an alumni of it and see the future and hopefully a CSFL championship someday, you know, that'd be nice. Yeah. I, I could see that happening with, with Gio, the new, the new sprint football coach. He's been, he has been a horse of a recruiter. He's got 29 bodies coming in, in the, in the fall. Our, our roster is up to 81, uh, 81. It, you can have up to 65 on the actual roster, but he has recruited up. We have 81 men right now. Um, I think that's something that we are um, encouraging all of our coaches to maximize their rosters. And he has really outdone that. Uh, but yeah, sprint football is in great shape. And another program of ours right now, I'm going to go to Albert is the tennis program. I know he probably thinks that I would never do this, but I'm, I'm going to give Albert props for, for starting a program that, I mean, we're talking about legitimately, again, I'm not just saying this, Albert, I mean this, he's really one of the best coaches and administrators that I ever worked with. And we got off on the wrong foot when we first started working together, but um, you know, I have a lot of respect for the way he ran that the men's and women's tennis program. And, you know, sometimes it was, sometimes we butted heads about it, but uh, you can never deny how great of a program our men's and women's tennis programs always were. And, to this day, this even and I'm look, really looking forward to next year because Concordia is finally gone. We have a good chance to win both the men's and the women's tennis championships as we competed in both championships this year and have both full teams returning. And I know it's been a few years since Albert's been gone, but I think that the, what you did for the program to start has really kind of had lingering effects. And, and it's the reason why we are where we are. So, Albert, why don't you talk a little bit about running that program um, when we were trying to, I, I think to be completely transparent, when we were trying to get this athletic program going, we're, we're focused on basketball and soccer and the sport, the, the mainstream sports and you're coaching a, you know, a, a sport such as tennis where some schools don't take it, put as much into it and you put your whole heart and soul into it. And that's kind of why we are where we are today in that program. So talk about that. Yeah, no, when I first got there, um, I had came from Holy Family where I had just won a women's tennis championship. Um, we beat Philly U, which was awesome. And uh, I get to Chestnut Hill and I've got kids who don't even have rackets before our first practice. So definitely a, um, you know, a, a mind blowing experience. But um, just, you know, had the support um, of Lynn and, and the administration early on needed athletes from other teams to, to, you know, field a team. And kind of like what I said earlier is we just look to get better every year. So the first couple of recruiting class I had just trying to get one or two players and, and, and good kids, because um, when I brought recruits in, like those kids hosted them every week, you know, and then there were weekends where the same kid would be hosting a recruit five, six weekends because I wanted them to see that person. And, um, you know, we uh, we just did that for a couple of years. And then we finally had a breakthrough year where, you know, we were able to recruit, you know, the Danielle Knott, the Kelly Dennis, the not, you know, we got four or five kids that were really good. And that's kind of when we really took off. Um, you know, Shane can appreciate this being from Canada. We went probably all international from 2012, 13, all the way to, you know, when I left in 16. Um, and, you know, that was a huge thing for us in, in the admissions department and trying to get those kids, you know, visas and, and financial aid and all kinds of stuff. So it was not just me. It was it was the administration. It was the admissions department. It was financial aid um, and residence life. I and mean, there's a lot of people that have to be involved in that to to put that together. But you're right. I mean, we were able to 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 field a competitive team, which I think also helped some of the other teams. I mean, we had I mean many men's basketball players and, and lacrosse players come down to our matches and, and then our kids would go to their matches and their games. So um, I think it really created a sense of community, which was great. Um, and the fact that teams were having success, um, you know, one of the proud things that I had is we were one of the first teams to go to the NCAA tournament and 
that was a great experience being able to go to you know some of these events and seeing how the NCA puts on events for for national championships and regional championships. So uh, it was a great experience. I still um, you know talk to a lot of the players that I coached. Um, you know I'm now in real estate, so actually a couple of them have referred clients to me, which is awesome. Uh, it just goes to show how much they trust me to you know what I did from there at the school and obviously how I'll take care of their other people going forward. But um, yeah, it was just great. Just just love being a part of it. And and I'm competitive and I'm I'm actually coaching my own kids now in soccer and in some different sports. So it's just great to see how you know competitive I was then and how I still am now with my own kids, which is awesome. So competitive you were. Pete I, have, I have a question. I'm just curious. I, Albert, talk about the faculty student basketball game <laughs> and his competitiveness. Yeah. <laughs> Some great memories are coming to mind yeah. through this conversation. Yeah. But my question is men's tennis in the centennial. I'm centennial. You can tell where my brain is yeah. um, in the CACC. Do they have enough teams to sponsor tennis with Concordia leaving? That would be a question for Jesse. I, I've been out of the game a little bit. Um, I'm not sure, really. Yes. Yeah, so, we still have enough. I know. When I left, we didn't. Who who added men's tennis? Dominican. Yeah, Dominican's in. So there's Dominican, there's Caldwell, there's um, Chestnut Hill. Oh, okay. Caldwell had dropped, so yeah. they picked up two. All right. So we do have enough. And and that, that what Albert was just talking about also brought back to me, speaking of evolution, um, you know, he grabbed some kids that didn't even have tennis rackets. I, I can remember so many times where we, where women's lacrosse is what comes to mind right now. We had, you know, we didn't have enough players. So we had some basketball players come out next thing you know, Lindsay Alexander, who's one of our women's assistant coaches right now. She was an all conference player by the end of the year. Yeah. And I've seen numerous uh, men and women pick up another sport because we needed help and, and be, and play well for us. And I, I always love that. I, I always think that it's, it's great for kids to try to play as many sports as they can while they can. Um, I know when, when it comes to scholarships, it gets a little bit hairy because some coaches are, are territorial of their players, but um, I, I encourage it. I mean, any anytime a coach comes to me and says, Hey, so-and-so wants to play for instance, right now, um, one of our women's basketball players used to, she's a really good athlete and she used to play volleyball in high school. One of the girls on volleyball got word, told her coach, her coach called my coach or the women's basketball coach. And now, now, you know, it's, what do you think about that? I said, I think it's great. I think we should encourage that. I mean, you know, you have, you have up until a certain time to play college sports and now's the time. And I get it. We, we're giving scholarship money and that's your player. But at the same time, if the, if the student athlete wants to play more than one sport, I, I believe we should allow it as we should be encouraging it and, and not worrying about the, the scholarship end of it. Um, and yeah, this is great. Uh, Mari, have you, have you got, have you figured out your, uh, have we have any te technical difficulties, Mari, or are we still, are we ready to talk yet? And I see Margaret, you're on the screen now, looking good. We took the, we took the bandana off your neck, but still good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think I've, I think I've, I've kind of asked everything that, that, I, that I wanted to know. I, I guess I can tell everyone real quick. I'll, I'll try to go real quick. Uh, 2003, I started the men's basketball program and have been there since. And I remember in 2003 uh, that, I would walk into practice. I was a part-time coach and I would walk in and walk down the halls to go to practice and maybe see two people on my way to practice. And it was, everyone was still full-time then. It just, it was so small. I believe there might've been 380 to 400 students at the time and, you know, bringing kids into school little by little. And then probably two or three years later, you know, you're starting to see a little more activity around the college. And, and then, you know, again, up until now where, before pre-COVID, the, the campus is vibrant. There's, there's kids everywhere, uh, very friendly environment. The one thing that's, that has remained the same is, you know, the, the staff in the cafeteria are always beloved. Miss Nancy, God rest her soul, and Miss Lillian, who's still there now, 
and we have Walt at the front desk and Miss Shirley. I mean, how could anybody, anybody that has met Miss Shirley? I mean, I, I always thought that Miss Shirley was a metaphor for the college. I mean, she was everybody's mother, everybody's grandmother. You just wanted to give her a hug every time you saw her. She was so pleasant and lovely, uh, a lovely person. But, I, you know, I don't think it's an accident that that's who you greet when you walk in the in the front door at Chestnut Hill College. You know, it. it it, it, it wasn't by accident. It was kind of, it's the way that we do things. And, and I think it's great. Um, Jesse, that's been consistent for all the years that I've known about Chestnut Hill and been involved with Chestnut Hill. The greetings of the students to the alumni and alumni. And yes, I was part of the group that went through the change when the Alumni Association became the alumni, because for a while we were alumni slash alumni. <laughs> so we have had everything, but I still goof up sometimes. But the spirit and the warmth of the college persists, and that's what's important. That's awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. I, it just popped away from me. Who, who said they have a memory that they want to share? Was that you, Dan? Share it. Come on with it. Sure. Well, two quick ones. One is about uh, move-in day. I'll never forget, like, all the athletes come out. Like, that is, as a new incoming student and parent, they were floored by the fact that, like, we have tennis, soccer, baseball, sprint football, lacrosse, like everybody's on campus beforehand to help people move in. They just thought that was the most ridiculous thing that they were going to have to carry their fridges to their room 200 yards. So that was a super cool experience. <laughs> I hope it still happens because put them to work at least a little bit. They do work for their money just a tad. I don't know if the, you can pay athletes anymore, but uh, the other story, and this is kind of an indictment on me, unfortunately, is my senior year, um, our first home game, we got back from Florida it was snowing on the baseball field in March, of course, because it's Philly. And I looked over at the two guys that were playing outfield with me. And I was like, guys, I'm going to be honest. I do not want to play baseball anymore. I am totally burnt out of sports. I will go to bat every day for, with you guys. And they never for a second thought anything less of me. So it means a lot to me that people like never thought I was ever going to take a playoff, that I was going to work as hard as I could for them but I was completely done with sports. And I don't know if Shane's the same way. Like you went through the hard times of, of CAC baseball or lacrosse and seven games my freshman year is all we won out of 43 or something like that. And it just kept going up from there. But to see the transition, like I would give my left arm to play another baseball game, but you see it as a college student. It's like you, sometimes you take those things for granted, which is unfortunate. And I totally appreciate that, Dan, because I felt the same exact way in my senior year of college playing baseball. I played basketball and baseball at Textile, which is now Jefferson. But I, I, I vividly remember um, having dreams of playing professional baseball when I was done in college up through junior year. And midway through my senior year, I did not I could not care less about playing any more sports after that was done. It is such a grind. And it, it is really what makes the athlete, the student athletes. And, and I think it's what makes you all so marketable when you come out of college, because because of all the things that you go through, the hardships, and it's not just the actual sport, it's everything else that goes into it. And I believe, Lynn, am I, am I wrong? Did you start the athletes moving in, moving in the, the regular student body or was that Bill Stiles? I'd like to take credit for that one too, but I don't think it was me. I am giving you the credit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give you the credit. But yeah, that, that is that is a great thing, and, and it will continue. It obviously didn't work last year with, with COVID, and, and hopefully it could work this year. Um, we'll see. I guess time will tell. But definitely this uh, – for, for those that might not know what we're talking about, the um, the fall sports move in a couple weeks early to start training. And so by the time the regular student, the other the rest of the student body is moving in, um, we usually we use our teams that have been on campus to help on move in day. And they, they get T-shirts that, that are they all wear the same T-shirt. So as the families pull up, it's really well or orchestrated. Uh, mainly by the um, residence life staff in, in 
collaboration with athletics, but the residence life staff really coordinates what times everyone's moving in and we coordinate what teams are going to be working. And yeah, they, each team puts about an hour or two in and, and the families really do appreciate it. So again, another, another chestnut hill touch that I think is, is great. Um, we are thrilled to have you here and I really appreciate you taking the time on a Saturday afternoon. Hopefully you can go back to the beach, back, go have fun, do something <laughs> fun. <laughs> And especially, you know, all of you, all, all of you alums, of course, coaches, you guys are all the best, but Al and Lynn, you're not at the college anymore, but, and, but you're missed and you care. And that, I think that just says everything about who you are. So thank you, especially for being here today. Yeah, I totally agree. And I hope this can, now, Maureen. I hope this can grow and well, hopefully it won't be, hopefully it won't be virtual again next year, but, but this kind of forum where we can all discuss and we can bring people from all many different years to kind of talk about the way things have evolved I think it's it's such a great such a great tool for the college and and just to kind of connect with each other we all have a lot in common thank you so much for doing this and on that note that what Jesse just said just a little plug um next year sister Carol retires next June um, and because she was so integral to expanding athletics, getting men to campus, we will definitely be having a big athletics push um, reunion, something next next June in honor of Sister Carol. We'll be I'll talk to Jesse about that. But, yeah, we, we need to get you guys back together, former staff, former players and, you know, really celebrate how far Chestnut Hill athletics have come under Sister Carol's tenure. So stay tuned for that.